Good morning. I'm Patty Comstock, principal of P.B. Smith Elementary School. It is my honor to welcome you to this convocation for the 2013 school year. Educators love stories, and there's no better story than the true ones out of the mouths of babes. So I'm going to start with a true story, and I'm sure that some of you of a certain age can relate to it. Often I invite students to my uh, office for lunch. Last year, I was enjoying lunch with four second graders. One little boy noticed a picture taken of me about five years ago with my adult daughter, and he asked, who's that in the picture? And I replied, that's my daughter, Olivia. He nodded, and he continued looking at the picture, and he asked, who's that other person in the picture? And I said, that's me. And he looked reflective, and he gave another nod, and he said, hmm, you used to be young. <laughs> I wanted to add, yes, and that's what four years of principaling will do for you, but I didn't. I start with this story to let you know that our children will keep us humble, and I am certainly humble as I stand before you today. Some of you might think that we're gathered here to celebrate the start of a new school year, and that is a nice sideline to today's assembly. But that isn't the real reason that we're here. We have virtually shut down the operations of Fauquier County Public Schools during this most busy time of year. We've stopped our busyness to take a few minutes to listen and reflect and to sit down together. We're here because it is one time, in fact, it's the only time in the academic year that we gather as community. We come together for just a few minutes, not as food service, transportation or maintenance workers, teachers, secretaries or school nurses, custodians, instructional assistants, administrators, or parents. Today, we gather as community. We are the Fauquier County Public Schools. Every parent, yes. Every parent, every faculty member, every support staff person, and every student. We are together today because while our roles are very specific and our jobs are very different. We have one mission, to serve the students in our schools. In many of our schools, we read a book called The Power of Words. We were reminded that the way we frame our words has a lasting impact on how students see themselves. And I would go further to say that the words of our coworkers have a lasting impact on how we see ourselves in our work. The book is a reminder of the awesome responsibility that each of us has through our daily interactions with students and with each other. The unintended messages that we send will set the tone for another's day. Thank goodness that we are a community. When I speak a quick word, with an unintended sharp tone. I know that a cafeteria worker, a teacher, and a playground monitor will follow up with a smile and encouragement that can help redirect that student's day. Vice versa, when a student has had a rough start to a morning and has rushed, simply make it to the bus stop on time. I'm confident that the driver welcomed her by name as she boarded the bus. I can be there to smile and greet that child as she gets off the bus at school, hopefully helping to reset the day's start on a positive note. I'm assured that as she moves through the morning, she will receive affirming words from many folks in the school community. Each of us contributes to the well-being of every student. Look around you. 
really, look around you. These wonderful and dedicated people sitting right here in this room are here to support you in your work with students. We have each other's backs. I've been a part of many teams in my life because I'm really, really old, as that honest second grader reminded me. As I stand here today, I look around and I am awed by the team around me. It's quite incredible to know that we have a team of this size, a team of this caliber to serve our students. Each one of us brings unique skills to the team. And of course, each one of us will face challenges in our work. The good news is we are not alone. We support each other as much as we support our students. I want to remind you that together we are strong. Together we can change lives. Together we can accomplish miracles. Together we teach. I wish each of you the best in this school year. Thank you, each one of you, for partnering with me in this incredible team known as Fauquier County Public Schools. And now it is my pleasure to introduce some special members of this incredible team to you. First, I'd like to recognize our school board members that are with us today. Donna Grove from the Cedar Run District. Duke Bland from the Marshall District. Brian Gorg from Center District. And we have some of the Fauquier County Public School senior staff with us today. Uh, Sandra Mitchell, she's Associate Superintendent of Instruction. Our Assistant Superintendent of Administration, Janice Bourne. Our Assistant Superintendent for Student and Special Ed Services, Frank Finn. <laughs> the Executive Director of Budget and Planning, Marcy Kotov. <laughs> and Director of Human Resources, Janelle Downs. And a personal thanks. I'm sure glad you all have my back and everybody else's back. Thank you for all you do. It is now my honor to introduce the color guard from Liberty High School's ROTC. Please stand for the presentation of colors and remain standing for the posting of the colors and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Good morning and welcome. I am Donna Grove and it is my privilege to serve as the school board chair in Fauquier County. As we begin a new school year, I want you to know that the board recognizes and appreciates the commitment and dedication of all of our outstanding employees, from our administrators to our support personnel. We know that quality work goes on in our schools every single day, and all of you together are the ones who make that happen. At this time, I would like to recognize our new employees. Please stand so that the rest of us can welcome you to our family. New teachers, come on, stand up, stand up, bus drivers. <clears throat> I want you to know that you have joined a truly wonderful place, a school division with a history of exemplary performance and with a commitment to be excellent by design, a phrase that you will hear often. Welcome to all of you. And as you are seated now, please look around you to all of our returning employees and know that all of us here are eager to support you. To all of our returning employees, thank you. The school board is so grateful that you have chosen to continue to work here and to make a positive difference in the lives of Fauquier County's children. Every one of you has a gift to give, the gift of enriching the lives of the children of this community. If you notice, I just welcomed our new employees to our family. Dr. Comstock said, our community, I'm gonna take it a step further and say family. And for me, that's because Fauquier County Schools is, it's family. And we want all of you to feel like you're a part of this family. I wanna tell you a few reasons why it feels like family to me. And I'll start with the HR department. I think when all of you were hired, you dealt with HR. Janelle Downs, director, of that human resource department. She's the daughter of classmates of mine and Dukes from when we were at Fauquier High School. When, uh, if you go back to those days at Fauquier High School, when I would walk down the hall toward the home ec wing, I believe now it'd be foreign language, I would pass by the finance director's office, Mr. Ed Lee, also known as Roger and Gilmer's dad. Now, and it, for those of you that don't know, Roger is principal here at Liberty and Gilmer works over at Kettle Run. Mr. Lee would always have a smile and a kind word for me. I'm not sure he had the same thing for his boys, but... <laughs> and his, and, his, and uh, Mrs. Lee was also there also with a, a smile on her face. And um, as we would, uh, oh, one other thing about Fauquier High School, I do believe, and I haven't seen him this morning, but I do believe that Roger Seitz was roaming the halls back in those days, even. <laughs> so, um, let me see, when I would go to the cafeteria there at Fauquier, I had an aunt who worked in the cafeteria, but all the ladies who worked in the cafeteria were like aunts to me. They all had a smile and a kind word for all of us as we walked through their line. When my two daughters were here at Liberty, 
I had another aunt who worked the cafeteria line here at Liberty. And I think there's one or two people in the audience today that may have ridden my dad's school bus. Um, actually, my granddaddy started driving the school bus when it wasn't even a school bus. It was a horse-drawn wagon. <laughs> Honest to goodness, in 1928. And um, then he drove it for a while when it became act an actual school bus. And then as my uncles would get to be 14 or 15 years old, they would start driving the bus until they graduated high school, at which point the next one would drive until he graduated. My dad was the youngest, so he ended up driving for 23 years. Now, my dad wasn't known as a strict disciplinarian, but we all remember the good times and the sense of family on that bus. Uh, I'm sure if Cheryl Fisher had been head of transportation in those days, she would have had a heart attack. <laughs> Before Fauquier High School, I attended Cedar Lee Junior High at that time, and I fondly remember B.B. and Paige Mitchell, as some of you I'm sure also do. Though I never had B.B. for a teacher, that never stopped him from telling me what to do even after I had gone on to Falk here. He followed and he still told me what to do. Um, and before Cedar Lee, I attended Brewstersburg Elementary, very much like Duke's Elementary School that he spoke of a couple of years ago. Brewstersburg Elementary was at that time a two-room school. We had first, second, and third grade in one, grade in one room, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade in the second room. By the time I got to third grade, we actually added a third teacher. Um, she went on to teach both of my brothers, both of my daughters, and I, I would dare say just about somebody from every family in Southern Fauquier County. Her name is Pat Holmes. Today her son, Mark, wherever you are, Mark Holmes is the activity director here at Liberty. So you see, um, Fauquier County Schools is, is family for me. I could go on and on. Um, these are just a few examples. As I, would, as I close, I would like to remind you that each one of you can touch a life and make a difference. I mentioned a few people who touched my life. Some of them were teachers, some of them worked. We're not, but they can all touch a life. None of us know exactly how we will touch somebody's life, only that we have the opportunity to make a positive difference for each child every day. It doesn't matter who we are or what job we hold. On behalf of the school board, may I extend our deepest appreciation and best wishes to all of you. Thank you and may you have a terrific opening of school. Good morning. As Dr. Comstock so eloquently said, all of us assembled here today have the awesome responsibility and privilege of supporting and nurturing the learning and well-being of all of our students. We are all teachers from that perspective. Whether you help prepare meals for them, get them to school, care for their facilities and their health, counsel them, provide leadership or support, or guide them in their learning, we all know, we all know that we are important. The lion's share, however, of our students' time is spent within the walls of a classroom with a teacher, and it is in that spirit that each year the Washington Post invites each school in the Washington area to select an outstanding teacher. While the Post requires that we choose one teacher to represent the school division, we consider all the nominees, teachers, and resource professionals from last school year winning examples of the best the education profession has to offer. It is now my honor to recognize those teachers who were nominated this past school year. They're sitting here in front to my left and I'm going to ask each one to stand when I call each name. And please congratulate each one with your applause. First, Mary Walter Elementary School's honoree is a 30 year veteran of teaching. She is a first grade teacher and a master in differentiation who not only effectively delivers instruction to all learners, 
but also recognizes and values all student contributions, conventional and uh, non-conventional. Her colleagues and administrators say that she has made student achievement the focus of her career, and it shows in absolutely everything she does. Please congratulate Mary Walters Juanita Carroll. Brumfield Elementary's school winner is also a first grade teacher. Her students said of her, when we have to learn our spelling words, we actually have fun. A parent wrote of her, she has very high expectations for her students, but also creates a very safe, welcoming, and friendly environment. I've never in five years, this parent said, ever heard her raise her voice. She is a wonderful role model for her students and colleagues. Please congratulate Brumfield's Rachel Gray. <laughs> Greenville Elementary School's nominee is also a first grade teacher. First grade teachers rule today. <laughs> Her colleagues say that she epitomizes all things one could wish for in a first grade teacher. Dedicated and results oriented, she consistently demonstrates excellence in all areas of her teaching. Putting in countless hours of personal time in planning, she does not do her work for praise or public acknowledgement, but because it is the right thing to do for her students. She will be the teacher children will always remember. Please congratulate Greenville's Linda Hume. Liberty High School's honoree is a music teacher who instills a sense of enthusiasm and love of music in his students. He inspires his students to work hard to develop their art and improve their craft. His bands consistently receive excellent and superior ratings at competitions. He goes the extra mile to extend the love for music beyond graduation in that he invites past Liberty High School students to join the band on stage for a final piece of music each year at the annual winter concert. Please congratulate Liberty High School's Patrick Nydick. And you'll be hearing from Patrick a little later in the program as well. Pierce Elementary School's honoree is a kindergarten teacher who, according to her colleagues, realizes that some students seem naturally enthusiastic about learning, but many need their teachers to inspire, challenge, and stimulate them. She does not, she does just that. She makes all students active participants in their learning, expects all of them to learn, and they do. It is not one specific skill that she possesses, but rather it is everything she brings to her job that makes her a master teacher. Please congratulate Stephanie Norris from Pierce <laughs> Elementary. <laughs> Coleman Elementary also nominated a first grade teacher. Her colleagues stated in her nomination packet that she is a master teacher who knows the whole child. She is a consummate professional and a model of all that is good in education. A former student, now a fourth grader, said this honoree never shows favorites because that is the kind of person she is. The student also said she has an open door and I can go to her anytime about anything, probably for the rest of my life. Please congratulate Carol Olinger of Coleman Elementary. <laughs> Auburn Middle School's honoree is a sixth and seventh grade mathematics teacher who has the rare ability to motivate even the most reluctant math student because her confidence and determination are contagious. Students are constantly reminded through subtle use of problem solving to think math at all times. Her greatest talent is in making the complex seem simple. She understands mathematics at its highest level, yet she reaches students at their level. Please congratulate Auburn's Susan Petrus.
Warrington Middle School's honoree is a history teacher. Her passion for her work is surpassed only by her passion for her students. Her interactive approach to teaching civics fosters lively discussion among her students. She has a natural ability to leave, her colleagues say, and her coworkers agree that she is one of the most educated and respected individuals they have ever worked with. Join me in congratulating Peggy Recker from Warrington Middle School. Bradley Elementary School's honoree is a highly respected teacher who has educated hundreds of students over 31 years. He too is a master teacher in every sense of the word. A few powerful but choice words from him are all it takes to generate discussion and active learning. Many former students have written complimentary letters and even college papers describing the impact that he has had on their lives and learning. This honoree could not be with us today, but please join me in congratulating this very gifted teacher, Mr. Paul Watkovich from Bradley Elementary. Thompson Elementary School's selection is its ESL teacher who, according to her colleagues, cares deeply about the whole child and sees only the good in students. She has helped to change the educational path for many Thompson students. She also finds time to hold evening classes to teach English to Spanish speaking students. Parents, one of her second grade students wrote, when I'm with you, I feel proud of myself because of all the things you taught me. And I'm so really thankful that you made me work so hard. This honoree also could not be with us today, but please join me in congratulating Nancy Sevillanos from Thompson. The school division's representative for the Agnes Meyer Award is from Fauquier High School. He is, he is a modest person with an extraordinary scientific knowledge. This National Board Certified Teacher encourages his students to explore science outside the classroom, from the outdoor lab to the Blue Crab Bowl competition to an exploratory study to Andros Island. A colleague said the following, in my 42 years of teaching, I have never seen a teacher that works harder. And one of his students said this, his tests are nothing like I've ever seen before. He gives us new data to analyze and requires us to use critical thinking to solve the problem. Despite the difficulty of the tests, they help prepare us for the future. I will be forever indebted to him for this lifetime gift. Please join me in congratulating and welcoming to the podium, George Murphy, the 2002 Agnes Meyer Outstanding Teacher. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell, for your very kind words. This was a very humbling experience when we have so many, so many excellent educators. I've been told that we're in for quite a treat now. The debut of a group known as the Fauquier County Jazz All-Stars. This is a band conducted by Matt Yonke, who is the band director at Kettle Run High School, and Patrick Nydick, band director at Liberty High School. It is comprised of student musicians from all three high schools. The band will perform Four by Miles Davis and Chameleon by Herbie Hancock. And now, the Fauquier County Jazz All-Stars. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome back. It's great to see all of you here this morning, and I'm energized by the obvious excitement and enthusiasm you have for the upcoming school year. Before I share a few brief remarks, please join me once again in recognizing the high school band directors Matt Yonke, Patrick Niedick, Andrew Paul, and the Fauquier County Jazz All-Star. Good morning once again. Uh, I'd like to take just a moment uh, before I share some brief remarks to thank the people who are responsible for making this convocation possible. First, I want to thank Liberty High School Principal Roger Lee and the entire Liberty family for their hard work and preparation for this morning's program and for making us feel so welcome. I especially want to thank Liberty Horticulture teacher Kim Mathias for the beautiful floral display on the stage. Absolutely spectacular. And Kim asked me to share with you that everything here is for sale. And so uh, when the program's over, if there's something that's caught your eye, please come down and she will be waiting here uh, to, to sell these beautiful plants to you. Also, I want to thank uh, HR Director Janelle Downs and her talented staff for the outstanding job they did this year and every year with the Wellness and Benefits Fair. It's an event that's always a great way to kick off our convocation morning. I also want to thank HR for planning our 30-year luncheon. It's our second annual. It will be held immediately following this convocation at Grace Miller Elementary School, where we'll be honoring our 30-plus uh, year employees and all the work that they've done. And if you've been invited to that lunch, uh, luncheon, please plan to attend. I also would like to thank Patty Kershaw and Karen Parkinson for developing the convocation program and for putting together the video retrospective that we will enjoy together in just a few minutes. And to April Plummer and the Liberty High School nutrition uh, staff who always start us off each convocation morning with a wonderful breakfast. And finally, I would like to thank Carol Hollinger, uh, my secretary who does just about everything to help me prepare for this morning. Would you please join me in thanking all of those people?
Now, I have to admit to you, I have always enjoyed convocation. Beginnings offer opportunities for personal and professional renewal and allow us to dream just a bit about the possibilities. At the same time, they seem to evoke reflection, and I think that's why we enjoy the video retrospective that concludes our convo uh, convocation program each year. As we look back over the past several years, we've accomplished a great deal for our students and for our community. Many of these accomplishments are obvious. Others, not so much. But we've made dramatic improvements in so many aspects of our school program. One only has to review the Aspirations 2015, our strategic plan, to understand the breadth of our vision and the degree to which we brought and will continue to bring meaningful change to our schools. Over the years, we've focused on creating inclusive environments where each student is valued and each student is challenged with rigorous, attainable expectations. We've worked to continue, and we continue to work to ensure that every child who walks through our doors is welcomed and accepted for who he or she is, no exception. We have developed programs to emphasize respect and tolerance, and we insist that students at school treat each other with empathy and kindness. And we work each day to ensure that each student comes to our schools able to learn and succeed in a climate free of harassment or intimidation. Equally important, we focused on the continuous improvement of classroom instruction. And we've developed key indicators of academic success to measure our progress annually. A recent a review of that data indicates increased student achievement, not only of students in the aggregate, but also with groups of students who historically have had a difficult time finding success at school. For the fifth consecutive year, all Fauquier County schools, we believe, will be fully accredited by the Virginia Department of Education. We have focused on access as well. We have and we will continue to tear down barriers to student access to meaningful, challenging curricula and continue to encourage all students to stretch themselves to become as competent and as prepared as they are able. In 2004, when Fauquier schools began this effort to increase access, 362 high school students were enrolled in our most rigorous coursework. This past school year, 814 students completed the same courses, which represents a 125% increase. It's imperative that this trend continue for our students will be entering a highly competitive workforce in the years ahead. A workforce that will demand a high level of skill and knowledge and will accept nothing less. The future will certainly provide many challenges. Regarding instruction, as the diversity of our student population grows, we'll be challenged to find the resources to meet students' individual needs and at the same time continue to expand our inclusive practices. We'll be challenged further to become increasingly innovative in instructional delivery to ensure that student academic outcomes improve, even as expectations for student achievement rise, as they have in social studies in ma and math recently. We must adapt to an ever-changing technological environment, understand the emerging role of virtual education in our curricula, embrace the extraordinary power of social media, and begin rapidly to adjust to the way students process data and information. Perhaps most importantly, we must learn to harness the energy of students' incessant communication with each other. For if we fail to engage students on their own terms, over time, we will lose relevance as they and the world move forward at warp speed. Additionally, we must continue to reward students who challenge themselves for rigorous, with rigorous curricula and create pathways, not roadblocks, for students at all levels to push themselves into and excel in increasingly but com uh, difficult but compelling areas of academic investigation. The future of our students will be extraordinary in ways we do not yet understand. 
but we know that unless they are prepared with outstanding skills in math and in science and in technology, the future will hold little promise for them. This year will be the inaugural year of our new teacher evaluation process and the pilot year for the principal evaluation process. And I know that there'll be some trepidation as we move forward with these new tools. I believe they accurately reflect, however, our belief that our success must be tied inextricably to the success of our students. I appreciate the work that many of our professional staff uh, accomplished, those who participated in creating and piloting the new eval evaluation documents, and I appreciate your patience and support as we work through the wrinkles in that process uh, that are bound to arise during this first year. As I said, the future will certainly bring many challenges. Regarding operations, we must continue to attract and retain the highest quality staff in all areas of our school program. While we have made strides in teacher salaries, comparatively salaries for classified employees, such as bus drivers, school nutrition staff, custodians, and other classified groups are well off market. Improving salaries across the board will be important, but improving salaries for classified staff must be a top priority if we are to maintain the quality of excellence we currently enjoy in our school program. We must continue to find efficiencies in our practices. This year, we reduced our energy consumption by 10%, but we still experienced an increase in cost as energy uh, pr uh, prices rose significantly. As we prepare to complete the beautiful renovation at Fauquier High School, we must remain committed to lead construction standards and move to retrofit antiquated HVAC systems and lighting systems in existing schools so that rising costs will be managed well over time. As we remain committed to sustainable design, we teach our students to be wise custodians of the environment by our actions as well as by our words. This school year, we will go out to bid on health insurance for the 13-14 school year and the outcome of that pro process will have long-term implication for all our employees and their families in the division. Healthcare costs have become div the division's fastest growing expense and along with retirement costs pose the greatest risk to the long-term fiscal viability of our school division. Decisions made this year will have an impact on our school community for many years into the future. Please stay tuned and engaged as this discussion goes forward. Perhaps our greatest challenge going forward will be to cultivate stronger and more vocal support for schools throughout our community. Support that will encourage local government to restore the critical funding lost over the past four years. Without increased local funding for schools, valued programs will disappear, class size will continue to rise, and the personalized educational experiences that have become the hallmark of Fauquier County Public Schools will be at risk. The challenges that lie ahead are formidable. However, we too are formidable, and we have the capacity, the resilience, and the resolve to meet head on whatever obstacles confront us. Fauquier County Schools are wonderful places for students to learn and grow. They are wonderful places because you have made them so. We are in the people business. The relationships we share with each other with our students, with their families, make us strong and provide the foundation of trust and respect that are so fundamental to our students and our success. While we are all very different, and while we serve the school division in so many varied ways, we have come together this morning to celebrate. Celebrate the importance of our work and our shared and singular purpose of ensuring that our students receive the very best education possible. Please know how grateful uh, I am for your outstanding work, and on behalf of all of us in the Fauquier School community, I want to say thank you. In closing, I want to share a final thought. Jason Mraz, one of my former students at Lee Davis High School in Mechanicsville, released a song recently entitled Living in the Moment. And the first time I heard it, the words spoke to me as a lesson for all of us who work in education. Our work is complex and challenging, 
and we're living in complex and challenging times. During the year when you're feeling overwhelmed, and you will, overwhelmed with responsibilities and the demands on your limited time, slow down. Take a deep breath and remember to live in the moment. Forgive yourselves for the mistakes you make and let go of thoughts that don't make you strong. Remember, you do great work each and every day. You are the best of the best. Keep a healthy balance in your life and treat yourself well. You deserve it. I wish for each of you every success and every happiness in the new school year.